Dan Oman, Mike Beer, race number 10 at Arlington on Saturday. The grade one secretariat for three-year-olds. Let's take a look at this field in years past. The secretariat was run at a mile and a quarter. This year, it is going to be run at a two-turn mile at Arlington Park. And we got to start our conversation with this guy named Chad Brown. He's got the six fog of war, Mike, who was just a very good two-year-old. He won his first two starts. They were heading for the Breeders' Cup, and he had the dreaded two-year-old problem, the old sore shins, which knocked him out for the entire spring. How do you feel fog of war has come back? His last fig indicates he's come back better than ever, but he hasn't won this year. Yeah, you know, I feel like um, his first start of the year, the Paradise Creek, was a very disappointing performance for anybody who was a fan of his. I, To me, he just didn't run well at all that day. Um, I thought he turned it around a little bit last time. I actually felt like he ran pretty well there in a race that had a quick pace, and he was close to it. And win, win, win came from last and ran him down. But I still feel like he took a big step forward last time. They obviously have to be very happy this race is at a mile this year. He has wonderful tactical speed, and Time Form U.S. has him sitting third in the early going. Last time out, that's where he was in the Manila, and he held off Casa Creed, a late runner who came back to win, I believe, the Hall of Fame at Saratoga yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Chad also has the seven valid point, perfect from two lifetime starts. This is a horse that I think has a tremendous amount of natural ability. I think he's still green. I think he's still learning the game, and I know he beat a very weak field in his most recent start. So this is a big step up in class for valid point. I wouldn't be surprised if down the road he turns out to be the best one of these, but I do wonder if this is a case of too much too soon. I hate to doubt Chad. Yeah. I, listen, we look at him the exact same way, Dan. He's got just tons of natural talent. I like both of his races. He basically beat nothing last time with a perfect trip, but I don't see how he could have done it any easier. This is this is a really, really good call. We'll see if this is too much too soon. If it's not, this field could be in some pretty big trouble. Trainer Aiden O'Brien has two in here from overseas. We'll start with the two Van Beethoven. Group two stakes winner is a two-year-old. Hasn't hit the board from five starts yet in 2019, but... He's got some excuses, synthetic in his uh, seasonal debut, UAE Derby on dirt, then running in the French 2000 Guineas, the Irish 2000 Guineas, and then a very salty edition of the St. James Palace. The winner of that race came back to run second in a Group 1. The third finisher came back to win a Group 1 in France. He's actually getting a little bit of class relief in this Grade 1 at Arlington. Yeah, based on his last race, he's getting a lot of class relief in this race. Um, he was just in way over his head last time. I guess there's a question uh, as to whether he's really actually improved as a three-year-old, but it's hard to tell because he's been in it over his head right along. O'Brien also has the three, never no more. I like the way this horse won last time out at seven furlongs. Leopardstown is a left-handed turf course, very reminiscent of the American courses with tighter turns. Never no more sat inside, came out, and he was grinding down the leaders in the manner of a horse that'll appreciate an extra furlong. And that's what he's getting here. The main concern was A, the quality of that race. The fifth horse came back to run second in a listed event, and B, He's missed some time with a little bit of a setback. Yeah, that's the real question to me. I, I think he's run really well in both of his starts this year. And I think he, in a lot of ways, um, he's a major player in here because it feels like they might have been pointing to some of those uh, guineas races. And he just, for whatever reason, didn't make it. Um, they've rerouted him here, Dan. I, I think he's a super dangerous horse. This horse has talent. Number five, Rise the Guy, has really appreciated stretching out in distance in his last two races. Loved the turf in his turf debut on June 29th. The Churchill got a great trip and ride under Chris Landeros. Here's the formulator fact for Ian Wilkes. Past three years, three-year-old only. Last out winning turf routers, 31 to 44 day layoffs, three for nine, eight of nine on the board, 320 ROI. These figs, are, they're pretty good, but he did get a great trip last time. Yeah, I agree. I appreciate that he's improved in his last couple of starts, but was absolutely perfect last time. I wasn't blown away with the way he won that race. Let's talk about the last zip, the number four. Just at an uncontested pace. When winning at Belmont two starts back and was all out to hold the favorite safe. They ran him in the American Derby last time out, and I thought he ran well, considering that the pace was pretty solid and he was still punching away at the end. Maybe this horse can sneak away to an early lead. Yeah, the horse is pretty good, actually. I feel like he'd have to improve to be in this field, but he's rock solid and he's got great tactical speed. Faraway Kitten has gotten better and better for trainer Michael Maker, but he's still going to have to improve off buyers of 75 and 80 in his last two races. He overcame trouble to win the Mystic Lake Derby at Canterbury two starts back. He was solid in winning the American Derby. The horse that finished 11th in that race came back to earn an 87 buyer on the dirt. This horse is fairly tactical and can adapt to any pace situation. Yeah, I, 
have to say that his win last um, maybe the chips made the difference and he got the best one of the three. Um, but there's no this horse has really improved in his most recent starts. Topic time for the grade one secretariat stakes. Mike, you've always been a fan of Crafty Daddy. Had a three-race win streak snapped last time out. Tell us about that trip. Yeah, I don't know if he had a big excuse in that race, Dan, and just being on the outside, drawing post 10 of 11, and then he just really couldn't save any ground in that race, wide around both turns. I felt like Giroux had a tough time getting him to settle maybe up the backstretch. He was finishing very gamely at the end, though, to gain ground on the winner in there. I just feel like I have to give him one more chance. I think he's going to be a fair price in this race, and maybe this pace will set up a little bit better for him where they can get away from him and can just make one run at the end. I want to be close to the pace in here. I think Clint Maroon can be from his advantageous inside post. This horse was sold at public auction for $200,000 back on the 4th of July. That's not bad for a gelding. We saw this horse in New York earlier in the year go gate to wire in the Woodhaven. I thought in the Pennine Ridge, a mile and an eighth was too far for him. He was up close to the pace. He made the front. He was run down by some nice horses last time out in the manila i thought he lost all chance at the start he went right down to his nose he ended up chasing the pace and he was staying on in the end in a race where you know again the race the basically fell apart Uh, i want to give him an excuse for his last two i like him at a mile i think he can trip out at a price yeah i like this distance for him too and i thought his penine ridge was a great performance too back i'm with you that the distance is probably too far but i thought that was probably the best race he's run I'm going to go one, three, six, and two. You like Crafty Daddy? Give me numbers. Yeah, I went nine, three, seven, and six. Grade one secretariat. $500,000 is the purse. It's the 10th at Arlington on Saturday. Approximate post 528 Central. Good luck.